Hey everyone, welcome back. In the last episode, we worked on the shirt code for uploading new posts. Today, we'll focus on combining that functionality in the shirt code with the presentation layer code on the Android side. Now, before we dive in, there's something I'd like to address. If you remember way back in the first episode where we started building the application UI with in-memory data, I actually forgot to include the UI for the create post screen. So that means we need to build it now, which isn't really ideal. Now, the good news is that the UI structure is really similar to what we have already covered in previous episodes. To save us some time, I've already set up the create post screen composable and a basic version of create post view model. Of course, I'm assuming that if you have been following along in this series, you are already familiar with how these elements are structured so I won't spend too much time going over every detail. But don't worry, I'll still give a brief explanation of what this code does so you're not left in the dark. Let's get started. All right, now starting with create post view model, as you can see here in the constructor, we are taking two parameters. On one hand, we have create post use case. We created this in our shared module. And we also have image byte reader. This is a utility class that helps us read image byte from a URI. Now in this view model, we first of all declare this UI state variable, which is a mutable state of create post UI state. Now this data class has four properties. We have the caption or the description of the post. We also have this is loading that will help us show a progress indicator whenever we are uploading our post. We have error message of type uh, nullable string and the default value is null for when we have an error. And we have this post created property that will be updated when we get a result if the post was created successfully. Now coming back here, we have this method on caption change. Now this simply update the UI state. It makes a copy and set the caption to the input that was passed here. We have this on UI action that you are already familiar. This text in create post UI action. Now create post UI action is a sealed interface that defines a set of action that originate from the UI to tell the view model if something need to be updated or to apply some UI logic. Now let's go here inside create post screen. As you can see, create post screen composable function takes in a modifier. It takes the create post UI state and we have this on post created lambda that will be called when create post UI state post created. This property here will be set to true. We have own UI action. This go back here that takes in create post UI action so that we can instruct the view model to apply some UI logic when needed. All right, now coming in the body of this create post screen composable, here we define three variables. We have the context and we call here local context.current. We mainly use this context just to show the toast whenever we get an error message or something goes wrong. We have a mutable state variable selected image. Now, it's of type nullable URI and the default value is set to null because by default, no image is selected. We have pick image launcher. Now here we are using remember launcher for activity result to register a request for picking an image. We need to pass here a contract and for the contract, we are calling activity result contract dot pick visual media. And when launching this uh, launcher when calling this launcher will actually specify that we are interested in picking an image we need to pass on result this lambda will be called when the activity on result is available and it will provide us this URI. and what we do here is simply updating our mutable state variable this selected image here All right now coming here for the content of the screen as you can see we put everything in a box so we use a box here so that we can show this screen level loading the progress indicator on top of this column now let's expand this content now here as you can see we first of all have this post caption text field now the reason i have extracted this into a private composable is because when using this text field here we have to pass a lot of arguments actually so we just have this uh, text feed with a maximum height of 90 dp. We pass here the value as the caption and on caption change this lambda that we pass here. All right, now coming back. 
So after post caption text feed, we have a row for post image and this big image icon here. Now in this row, we have of course this text post image. And when the selected image is not null, in that case, we'll show an async image. So to show the actual image that was already picked. Now to allow the user to actually change uh, the already picked image, we make uh, this async image clickable. And when clicked, we simply call pick image dot launch. And here we need to pick a visual media and we are interested in images only. All right. So if no image is selected yet, in that case, we show this icon button, this one, the blue that you can see here. And for the unclick, we call again pick image dot launch. And here we specify that we are interested in image only. All right. So after this row, we have simply a button to upload an image. Now this button will be enabled as you can see only when the create post UI state dot caption is not blank and create post UI state is not loading. And also when the selected image is different of null. When clicked, we simply check if the selected image is not null. And in that case, we call on UI action, create post UI action dot create post action. And we pass the selected image. All right. Now, lastly, going in create post dot kt. Here we annotate our create post composable with this at destination so that we can navigate to this destination here. We define the view model and we call coin view model so that coin will inject this create post view model. And then we call create post screen. We pass create post UI state by calling view model dot UI state for the on post created Lambda. Here we use our navigator that we pass to this create post composable. This will be provided by the navigation library that we are using and we call pop back stack so that we can navigate back one screen. For the UI action, we simply pass a view model reference of our UI action method. All right. So lastly, don't forget to open app module and instruct coin how to provide uh, or how to create uh, the create post view model. Here we just need to call get and get again. Now, if you run this application, this is uh, the UI that you'll get for this new post destination. All right, guys, now coming back inside create post view model. So when the create action is invoked, we first of all need to read the image byte from the selected image URI. So to do this, I'll go ahead and above this on caption change method, I'll define a new private method and we'll call this as read image byte. This of course need to take image URI. Okay, now let's come here and call our read image URI and we'll pass action dot it or dot image URI. All right. Now coming back here, first of all, we need to show the progress indicator. So for that, we're going to update our UI state and set the is loading property to true. Now below this, we are going to call our view model scope and launch a new coroutine. Now here we will first define a variable and we call this result. And for this variable, we are going to call our image byte reader dot read image byte. Now this need to be passed the uh, URI. And for that, we're going to call our image URI. Now, because we are going to use this result only inside our when expression, we can directly capture that inside this when expression. So when we get a result dot error, we are simply going to update our UI. Is loading will be set to false and error message will be set to result dot message. Now, if we get a successful result, we'll simply proceed with the upload of our post. So let's go ahead and define upload post method, private function, upload post. This is going to take one parameter. We call this image byte, and it's going to be of type byte array. Now, because we are already inside a coroutine that was launched here, we can just make a, this a uh, suspend function so that we don't need to launch a new coroutine again. So from here, we just define a result variable again. Now, this time we, we are going to use our create post use case. Now, create post use case need to be passed image byte and caption. So for the caption, we are going to use a UI state dot caption 
and for image byte we'll simply pass our image byte that was passed here now after obtaining this result we'll simply update our ui state now if the result is result.error we make a copy of the ui state and we set the is loading to false and error message will be set to result.message now if the result is successful we make again a copy of the ui state is loading will be set to false and post created property will be set to true all right now before we run and test the application we'd like to be able to actually navigate to our create post destination so for that you'll go ahead and open socialapp.kt now here to our scaffold we need to pass a floating action button lambda so for this floating action um, button of course we'll surround our floating action button composable in an animated visibility so this will be visible when our nav host controller dot current destination as state now this is provided by the navigation library that we are using we need to check the value if that value is equal to home destination in here we have our floating action button for the on click we'll call nav host controller dot navigate so the route will be passed as create post the reason here is that when using this enough host controller, since we don't have access to the navigator that the library provides, we will manually navigate to this create post route. Also, if we go inside our app bar composable, now here I just pass the new post as the destination title. Now, let me bring my device here and we're going to run and test the application. All right, guys, now the app is launched. Let's go ahead and test. So here is our floating action button. So if I click here, we'll navigate to this new post screen. Now from here, we can add a caption like a new test post. All right, so then we'll go ahead and click on this icon so we can select an image. Now, of course, I went on internet to download uh, these two images so we can test the create post functionality because I'm not using my uh, real device actually. So let's go ahead and click on this create post. Now, as you can see, we navigated back to our home screen. Normally the post was created and we will use our event pass for that in a moment so that we can update our home screen directly when we come back from the create post screen. So let's for now just go ahead and refresh this. Right, so as you can see, there is our post uh, with this description here or the caption, new new test post. All right, guys, now coming back here, you'll need to go ahead and open eventpass.kt. This is under our common package inside a util package and you need to open this eventpass.kt. Here we just need to refine this new event post created that needs to be passed a post. Now, after doing this, we need to go back inside create post view model. When we receive this successful result, we need to call event pass dot send. Here we need to send a new event and that event is of type is of course post created event for the post will pass result dot data. We can force unwrap this because we are sure that this result when it's successful, we certainly have a result dot data that is not known. All right. So after doing this, you can open post a detail view model now here we just need to pass unit for this event now inside our home screen view model is where we actually need to do something so here we'll just define a new method let's call it as insert a new post and here we're going to pass it dot post now let's go below this update post method and let's define private function insert post this need to be passed a post. Now for this, we simply need to update our post feed UI state. So we'll make a copy of that. Now for the post list, we'll create um, this single item list and then append the already existing uh, post list from our post feed UI state. Now this is to make sure that the new post shows up on top of the other posts. All right, now for profile view model .kt, we can also pass units for now. All right, so let me bring this device here and let's run the application and test. 
All right, so the app is launched. Let's go ahead and click on this floating action button. We'll navigate to our new post screen. Let's go ahead and click on the add image. This time, let's select this Kotlin image. So here we say another test post, right? So now we can go ahead and click on create post. This will navigate us back. And as you can see, our post was inserted. We can go ahead and like the post. And why not add a comment, our first comment. Send that comment. As you can see, the comment list also was updated. All right, guys, now that's pretty much it for our social media app, at least on the Android side. We have now implemented all the core features needed to make this app fully functional. As for some of the remaining features like deleting a post or editing a post, there's really nothing new to cover in terms of implementation. These features follow the same patterns we have already discussed like deleting a comment or updating a profile. If you need a refresher, you can always refer back to those videos for guidance. Now to keep things efficient. I'll just go ahead and implement these features off camera and upload the updated code directly to my GitHub repository. So be sure to check that out if you're looking for those specific updates. In the next video, we'll do a bit of wrap up and then start looking at how to bring everything over to the iOS side. Thanks for sticking with me throughout this series so far and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.